Whilst they're not up there with Eldari, Gene Stealer Colts, Custodes, Imperial Knights and the other top factions in the game at the moment, Marines aren't doing too badly for themselves in 10th edition with a really solid army rule in Oath of Moment as well as a few very good potentially still under-costed data sheets to help pull them through. And today what I want to do was run through, not really in any particular order, but just run through the top five, in my opinion, marine units that they can bring to bear in 10th edition. So let's dive in and take a look at five units that I think if you are bringing any sort of competitive edge to your marine list, you probably want to at least take a look at and consider bringing. First up, we have the somewhat understated and often overlooked unit, which is the Humble Scout Snipers. These guys are just solid. They are 75 points or 150 for a full squad of 10. And for that, you get a toughness for two wound profile with a four up save that has got 10 incredibly good shots. They hit on threes with heavy, so they'll hit on twos if you don't move. And they are strength for minus two AP and two damage. But crucially, they are snipers, so they have the precision rule. So a squad of 10 against a toughness 4 target, that should net you roughly about 4 wounds through, meaning 4 2 damage attacks that you can allocate onto a squad's leader. And against something like a toughness 4, 4 up in run save marine level character, you get just over 2 wounds through their in run, and being 2 damage a pop, that means you can easily just do a flat 4 damage straight to an enemy character from 36 inches away, which is incredibly strong and against armies that have lower toughness characters like Eldari or Tau it's going to be very very easy for you to just kill off their precious squad leaders in the first turn of the game and just totally get rid of all their buffs and abilities that they can bring to their unit. So these guys are just so so useful for taking out those key linchpin characters from squads that your opponent maybe thought were safe because they're in a big unit that uh, is going to be a bodyguard for them. You can just get rid of them and target them straight away and get rid of all those powerful abilities that your opponent may have been counting on. And on top of that, Scout Snipers are also really good on the defensive. Yes, they only have their four up save, but they've got infiltrators so they can deploy pretty much exactly where you need them to. And they have stealth, so they're going to be minus one for your opponent to hit. But even better than that, they have a rule called concealed positions and that means they cannot be targeted unless the enemy is within 12 inches. So you can just sit a squad of these guys up on some terrain and they can just plink off enemy characters all game long and there's going to be very little your opponent can do about it until they get within 12 inches because they just are untargetable until your opponent gets up close. So you are going to be very, very easily able to kill off a character or two by the time these guys do eventually get targeted down because they probably are going to be public enemy number one as soon as you kill off a character or two from your opponent's list. And I mean, just all in all, they are really solid. They're great at sitting back, holding an objective, sitting in some terrain, and they can just do a lethal amount of damage to enemy characters pretty much all game long thanks to that 36 inch range and the precision rule. So for 150 points, I think these guys are almost a must take for dealing with enemy characters. Up next we have the Desolation Squad and these guys of course need no introduction really. Even at their new price of 34 points a model, they are bordering on criminally cheap. They each fire D3 bolter profile shots from out of line of sight and then they can move forward and unleash their super frag or super crack rockets into an enemy unit when they get close enough and that means that in addition to the uh, indirect fire you can be unleashing potentially 10 strength 10 d6 plus 1 damage shots into a tank or up to 10 d6 plus 10 strength 5 shots into an enemy infantry squad or two these guys are just so unbelievably reliably good at whatever you want them to do. They can contribute to the game right from the get-go thanks to indirect fire, even if you're hiding them behind a building. And then with Oath of Moment and Targeter Optics helping them avoid the negatives of indirect fire, they are just incredibly good at popping tanks, at killing hordes, and just generally being an untargetable nuisance all game long until you do want to move them forward and fire their super frag or super crack rockets, whichever you have taken on them. 
And I mean, yes, at the new price of 340 points, they are definitely an investment, but they are such a good one, and they're going to be so good at taking out whatever you want them to, that I think taking at least one squad in your army list is going to be almost a, a no-brainer just for that incredibly good indirect fire that they bring to an army. Up next, there's a slightly odd choice, perhaps, considering how Plasma has been nerfed overall in 10th edition, but the next pick is actually Hellblasters. And these guys, I think, are good just because of how cheap they are for what they can do. They are 25 points a model, and that gets you a very utilitarian gun, the Plasma Incinerator. It is heavy and assault, so you can sit back and hit on twos if you want, or you can advance these guys and still shoot to get a bit of extra movement out of them. And they have two shots all the time now at 24 inches. So a squad of 10 can be chucking out 20 strength 7 minus 2 AP shots or 20 strength 8 minus 3 2 damage shots up to 30 inches away with their 6 inch move, which for their cost isn't actually all that terrible. The hazardous rule when you overcharge is of course a pain, but they have a really cool powerful rule that really helps them to come into their own and that helps to negate that hazardous rule a little bit as well. Their rule for the chapter means that when a model in this unit dies you roll a dice and on a 3 plus it gets to fire before you remove that model from the board and crucially the hazardous test for that attack auto passes. So whenever your hellblasters get shot and models die you have a 66% chance of getting some more shots off before you remove that model from the board. So they really are just fantastic at unleashing a huge amount of fire into an enemy, even when they're being shot. And of course, this rule counts during the hazardous test as well. So if you fire your Hellblasters in your shooting phase and you overcharge and you, you roll a few ones on the hazardous test, you get your two shots from the Hellblaster. And then before you die, if you roll that three plus, you'll get another two shots thanks to For the Chapter. So each Hellblaster in theory could be pushing out four strength eight, minus three AP, two damage shots in a single shooting phase, which is really, really strong. And then what makes these guys even better is you can potentially combo this really well with something like an Apothecary because you can do all that and then you can just bring Hellblasters back in your command phase as well and just keep repeating this process turn after turn after turn. So Hellblasters for me are a really, really good unit. They are mobile thanks to Assault. They are punchy even with the non-overcharge version. You know, Strength 7 minus 2 AP is not terrible, but when they overcharge, they are super, super punchy. And then even when they do die, they can give your opponent a really nasty shock before they get removed from play. So they are really strong, really solid, really sneaky. And they're a unit that your opponent is almost not going to want to shoot at because of the risk of being shot back thanks to for the chapter. Up next we have our first vehicle. This is the Storm Speeder Thunderstrike and this is a fantastic anti-tank unit for the Marines just all by itself but also one of the best buff pieces that we have access to as well. Its own profile is really solid. It gets you a good two shots from the Last Talons which hit on twos at strength 9, minus 3 AP, D6 plus 1 damage, as well as a shot from its Storm Fury missiles, which again hit on twos, and these are strength 12, minus 3 AP, D6 plus 1 damage. And then you have a bit of backup for those with an extra D3 strength 8 shots at minus 1, 2 damage. So there is between 4 and 6 decent shots coming from this thing, 3 being specifically good at taking out enemy armor thanks to that high AP and the D6 plus 1 damage. So for 160 points, that is not dreadful on a Toughness 9 11 wound platform with a 14 inch move, I don't think. And I mean, with Oath of Moment, this really can do a number on most enemy armor quite reliably. But where this thing really gets a boost and where it is a real kicker for such a strong unit for Marines, and why I think in my opinion, it's almost a must take, for a competitive marine list is that its Thunderstrike rule means that when you shoot a monster or a vehicle, if you score a hit, then for the rest of the shooting phase, every Astartes unit in your army gets plus one to wound against that monster or vehicle. So against a big scary enemy knight or land raider or tyrannifex, you just zip this guy up and then if you land a hit, 
which with three shots hitting on twos and d3 shots hitting on threes, you're pretty likely to get at least one hit. But when you get a hit, all of the rest of your army gets essentially plus one to wound against it. So even intercessors will go from wounding knights on sixes to fives, and things like las cannons will be wounding most enemy vehicles and monsters on twos or threes rather than threes or fours now. So it is a huge, huge army-wide buff. And again, it combos so well with Oath of Moment, giving you essentially full rerolls to hit, to wound, and plus one to wound if you target an enemy vehicle or monster that's your Oath target with this thing first. It's going to mean that almost any enemy vehicle or monster that you want to get rid of you will have a very, very good chance of destroying in one shooting phase with all of those stacked buffs. So for me, even if you don't consider its own anti-tank shots that amazing by themselves, and I mean, personally, I think they're okay. There's only three really good anti-tank shots, but they are pretty good shots. D6 plus one damage and minus three AP is solid. But even discounting that, just for giving your whole army that plus one to wound buff, I think it's worth taking one of these just to get that off to, to boost the rest of your killing power. The final, and in my opinion, genuinely one of the most awesome units that the Marines have access to at the moment is the brutally good Gladiator Lancer. This thing is just on the face of it, incredibly cheap. It's only 145 points, and that nets you a toughness 10, 12 wound, three up save profile with two storm bolters for up to eight anti-infantry shots. And then the main focus, of course, which is its big gun, which is the Lancer Laser Destroyer. And this gun is just awesome. It's a 72 inch range, it's two shots, it hits on threes but is heavy, so if you don't move and with a 72 inch range you may not need to move, so it's gonna be hitting on twos when you don't move. And then it's strength 14, minus four AP, and D6 plus three damage. So it's a really strong profile. It's wounding pretty much everything on twos and threes, with minus four AP, it's getting through pretty much every armor and just pushing things to their invun. And D6 plus three damage is incredibly good. Gets you an average of what, 6.57 damage and a minimum of four. So it's a really good profile all by itself. But the real kicker is that this gets boosted to the absolute stratosphere with the Aquilan optics rule. And what that does is that every time this model shoots, you get to reroll one hit one wound and one damage roll. So it's got two shots with its big gun and it hits on threes with one reroll. It wounds most things on twos and threes with one reroll. And then at D6 plus three damage, again with one reroll. Now, obviously this is less good against an Oath of Moment target because you get the hit and wound rerolls anyway, but against any other enemy tank or monster or vehicle, this basically gets a mini Oath of Moment every single turn, and of course it gets the extra bonus of a damage reroll, which is incredibly powerful, and means you can turn those annoying 1s and 2s on the D6 roll into much healthier values. It means it's going to be fairly easy. If you get two wounds through past saves, you're going to be really reliably getting a solid, you know, 12 or 13 damage with this gun into even tough enemies like Knights and Tyrannifexes. I think the fact that it can largely operate away from Oath's targets as well just gives it that extra level of kind of individuality and strength as a sort of sole enemy armor hunter. And between one or two of these and an Oath of Moment target, you can really easily take out two big value enemy vehicles or monsters every single shooting phase quite reliably. So I think at 150 points, bringing two of these to almost every game especially if you know your opponent is going to have some armor. I would almost be taking that as the very first thing I did at the list building stage, just to bring some such reliably good anti-monster and anti-armor in the form of its uh, big gun. And I think in general, it's probably the best costed anti-armor vehicle that the Marines can bring in 10th. So bringing definitely one, but arguably two of these for just 300 points for the two of them, is almost uh, just a no-brainer must-pick option for me. So that's it. That is five units I think a Marine list should at least be considering if you want to bring something a little bit competitive to your game. All of these units have got a really strong role on the battlefield, whether it's taking out enemy characters, taking out enemy armor, or just being a pain and bringing some indirect fire to your list. 
They're all really solid, really powerful, and really well costed for what they do. But as always, I'd love to know what you think. Are these five units on your top five choices for marine data sheets at the moment? Or do you think some of them should be swapped out? And if so, what do you think is a better option for a marine player to bring? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me. But until next time, I'll catch you later, guys.